Hello and greetings from Iceland. Today is uh, March uh, 15th and this is my update. The experts say that the situation hasn't changed. The magma dike is still under Nottagi and there is a live camera watching that valley day and night. And uh, we got to see this uh, photo today showing how the crust has been pushed apart for like uh, 20 centimeters there. 10 centimeters each way. And there is no doubt about it that uh, lots is happening. But when it will come up, that is the biggest question. And the experts say that it is getting more and more likely that this will end up with an eruption. They had located the magma around one kilometer down before the weekend. And they said today that it has moved up maybe around one 200 meters. But they are however waiting for some footage in order to map it better. Like they are actually doing every day. So let's move to Grindavik and see what's going on there. There are still news about people getting out of town for longer and shorter time. I have been seeing interviews with hotel owners who have been uh, taking care of some of the people from there. And lots of these people is just uh, going away for a few days to take a break from the earthquakes. Or like I have mentioned before, I saw an interview with a woman and she described it as the ground was floating. And they are getting so tired of this. So it is not necessarily the potential volcanic eruption that is uh, scaring them out of town. It is just to get a break from all this. So I'm going to talk a bit about the risk. An eruption is still expected to come up in the North High Valley. That has not changed. And that would be the best scenario. That would mean that the lava would flow directly over the south coast road. It is a secondary road. That would for sure be the best option. So it is official now that they are preparing to use bulldozers in order to protect Grindavik. The Civil Protection Agency in Iceland is also planning to use uh, water, like was done in Westmanaeyjar eruption in 1973, meaning how serious this is. The earthquakes are just getting so close to town that they are preparing for worst case scenario, and that means that they are looking at the, the landscape and calculating where the lava would flow in order to protect the town and the harbor. And uh, I started to check on the maps, and uh, my conclusion was that the eruption would need to come up like four kilometers to west from a place that we expected to come up now. So things will have to turn to the worse, way worse, before an eruption would be threatening the town. So this has started to remind me a bit too much about the volcanic eruption we had in Westmanaeyjar, Westman Islands in 1973. That was a major event in Iceland, 5,000 people evacuated overnight from an island and in order to rescue the town we used the bulldozers and then we tried this method that had uh, never been tried before we think or to pump seawater on the lava in order to slow it down or stop it where possible. The water pumping meant that they could rescue more houses but it meant also that they could rescue the harbor which was about to close and that would have meant uh, game over for that town. Fishery town without a harbor will never be a fishery town again. Just like with Grindavík, where this uh, tongue of uh, lava is uh, protecting the harbor, but it is just a matter of meters if another eruption would uh, totally fill it up. So there are homes, companies and uh, harbor at risk in Grindavík. This photo is from Westman Air in 1974 while the town was being cleaned, but as for the population it would never recover. Lots of people just didn't want to move back and I actually understand that very well. But Westman Islands are however today one of my favorite places in Iceland and uh, so worth seeing. So it was of course a bit of a shock for me to find out in the news tonight that uh, they are already in contact with uh, all companies who have uh, bulldozers and getting ready to move into Grindavík in case of lava flow is getting too close to the town. And uh, one might ask, how is it possible to live on an island like this? And one might answer, we get used to it. And as for me, and uh, my interest in my country, my ever-changing country, started in 1973, when I was 7 years old, woken up in the morning to see volcanic eruption for the first time in my life, in TV. Three years later, one of the biggest earthquakes that we have had in uh, the last decades in Iceland struck around uh, 150 kilometers away from me, causing uh, major damage close to my parents' summer house. And I remember driving over those uh, cracks in the road up to two meters wide and thinking, wow, how can it happen? And then in 1975 and until 1984, over a nine years period, 
There were nine eruptions around 60-70 kilometers from I was. And I remember that some evenings I could uh, go out and I could see the skies orange. And uh, yeah, wow. The famous volcano Hekla was spewing ash over me in 1980. And there are just so many events that me and my generation has uh, lived through. And what the people in the Reykjanes Peninsula is uh, seeing and experiencing now is very, very unusual. So the situation here in Iceland is like this. We have around 50 reports of minor property damages from Grindavík from last weekend. Also in the Blue Lagoon, foreign journalists are coming to Iceland to follow up on this. Helicopter services are getting ready to offer tours, like they are expecting uh, what you call tourist eruption. But this magma dike is just 4 kilometers away from a major disaster if it moves to west, so I would not call that a tourist volcano. But we are optimistic, as we have to be here in Iceland. This is so far from being the most dangerous volcano in Iceland, but it has already showed us that it is pretty unpredictable. And that is of course what is causing this tension. And again, I want to thank you for your good thoughts, beautiful comments, and as usual, I'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island Iceland.